One of the most common questions by new immigrants in Canada is how do I transfer my settlement funds from here to Canada? And in this video, I want to share with you how I transferred or how I carried uh, my settlement funds of $200,000 in cash to Canada without going to jail or without being accused of money laundering. Hello everyone, this is Risey and welcome to my channel, The Quest for Wealth. So one of the options I had was to send uh, the money through Western Union uh, the day before my flight and then uh, as soon as I land in Canada, I go to Western Union and then cash it myself. Now the problem with this approach is that I lose a lot of money because of exchange rate. That is one and the next one is or the second one is that they have got hefty amount of fees. If I did that, I would have lost about 7,000 uh, dirhams, which is the uh, uh, Dubai money. And 7,000 dirhams is equivalent to about 2,500 Canadian dollars. And with 2,500 Canadian dollars, I can buy another, you know, beautiful, uh, nice sounding piano. So I thought, uh, probably not, I will not do that. And the next uh, option that I had was to open an account with HSBC, which is an international bank. They have operations in Canada. And as soon as I land in Canada, just activate the account. Now, the problem with that approach was pretty much the same. I would lose uh, so much money because of the exchange rate that they had and the charges that I will have to pay for opening such an account because I only can open a USD account. They did not have Canadian account uh, during the time. So really the, the most suitable option to me, at least in my mind, was uh, just to carry the uh, $200,000 in my bag and just declare to the officers that I had so much money. And so uh, that's exactly what I did. I had the bag full of cash. I had it as a carry-on luggage and I went to the immigration, I went to the customs, I went to the scanning department or area and I did not have any problem. Uh, no questions, no hassles, no nothing whatsoever. And then when I was in the airplane already, you can imagine that that bag would not leave my sight. So whenever I go to the toilet, the bag is always with me, it's trapped with me. It's always a case and it's quite weird that uh, whenever I go to the toilet, there is always somebody going towards me and I will have to make way for that person. So what I do is that I go sideways and exactly the same spot, whenever I go to the toilet, exactly the same spot is the spot where I have to go sideways to make way for the person coming towards me. And you can imagine the person in that uh, exact seat is not uh, too happy with me, but you know, I couldn't care less. And then the bag would sit on my side towards the, uh, the window. I chose, I always choose the window seat and it will be sitting by my side. What I do normally if I travel eight hours, over eight hours of flight, I normally take pills. I, I do uh, drink sleeping pills because I have a hard time sleeping in the airplane or any moving carriage really. And uh, during that time, I decided, no, I will not take pill, I will not sleep. <laughs> I will just have the bag <laughs> on my side while I watch, you know, various entertainment. It was a 22 or I think 24 hour flight to Toronto uh, Pearson International Airport. So then when I arrived, at the Toronto International Airport, there was a paper that were uh, provided to the passengers, essentially asking uh, various declarations on whatever uh, the passengers had to carry into Canada. And in that declaration, I declared I had so much money uh, in my bag as my settlement fund since I am a new immigrant in Canada. The first time you land as a new immigrant to Canada, there are various bureaucracies, papers, officers that you will have to talk to uh, and answer questions uh, from. There are various scanning areas, various queues that you will have to queue into to provide information uh, to legalize your stay in Canada. And so uh, I was in the queue after so many queues that I have done and uh, one uh, officer asked me about my declaration paper and, and I gave it to him and he said, okay, so you have the 200,000 with you now? And I said, yes. And okay, it's in your bag? And I said, yes. And then he said, 
okay you better take care of that bag that is one important bag and i said ah oh, yes yes and uh, it was pretty much the same question that um i was asked uh on the following uh cues and uh, officers that i had uh, to to answer to uh the last officer that i had to provide my documentations to pretty much ask me the same question i declared everything that i had i declared uh, everything that was inside my bag my carry-on luggage my uh check-in luggage and they essentially asked me you know if i had the liquid cash uh, inside my bag and i said yes i have the liquid cash inside my bag it's my settlement fund i am a new immigrant and uh i decided to carry it with me and they said pretty much the same take care of that bag don't lose sight of of the bag <laughs> now one thing that is important and i think if you uh, want to do the same or thinking of doing the same was that i was prepared with all the documentations i had uh, my bank statements I had my employment contract even. I had the paper at the exchange office or the currency exchange office, essentially me exchanging dirhams to Canadian dollars. I had all the papers just in case they wanted to know if the money was indeed mine and not being laundered. None of the officers asked me any uh, question about do you have the, the paper? Do you have any proof that this money is yours? Do you have uh, any documentation of your employment? None of them asked me such questions. I think it also helped that I'm female, uh, I'm Asian, <laughs> and I looked harmless, at least during the time, you know? <laughs> during the time, I, I looked harmless because, you know, taxation can, can change you guys. Taxation can change any person, really. And so after my uh, COPR or the certificate of uh, permanent residency was canceled that's essentially what happens the copr will be canceled and then uh, we are provided uh, with uh, the same document saying that we have or uh, the new immigrant have already landed and this paper this the canceled copr will be the paper that you will have to provide to service canada for you to apply for your sin or the social insurance number social insurance number is absolutely important here you are connected with your social insurance number with whatever you do within canada or even outside of canada and so that's what happened the copr was cancelled i went to the carousel to take my luggage and when i was already in the queue there was the same guy the same guy who was in the aircraft with me in the queue he was in front of me and uh, he didn't look very happy to see me actually i needed to have my uh, luggage scanned for my domestic flight and he was there and he was looking at my luggage and he said uh, he asked me what's inside your luggage your dead boyfriend <laughs> and i said yeah the body of my dead boyfriend <laughs> and he just looked away and therefore i can certainly conclude that he was not happy to see me in the same queue but i never heard from the same guy ever again since i landed here thank god and, and so i landed in Moncton at uh, 12 uh, in the morning i couldn't sleep because of jet lag not because of the money because <laughs> the entire trip is over and the very next day which was six hours after or even seven hours after i went to the bank which is bank of nova scotia and uh, i deposited the cash and open accounts uh, with uh, bank of nova scotia bank of nova scotia have got a certain program a bank account program for new immigrants in canada and in this program with uh, nova scotia you can open a checking account a savings account and a credit card if you guys are thinking of taking in uh, money from wherever you are to canada what i did will work it can work and it did work it's a personal experience what you have to do though is that you have to first be absolutely ready with all the documents that proves that the money is yours and declare the paper and to all the officers that you have so much amount of money if you do not want to lose so much money on the transfer fee on the exchange rate perhaps uh, this could be a good way for you guys 
to bring your settlement funds to Canada if it amounts to more than $100,000 uh, or even really less than $100,000 even at $20,000, uh, $10,000. It will make sense to keep as much for yourself as possible. So that was my story of bringing in my settlement funds to Canada. I hope you gained value in this video. If you did, uh, consider liking this video, subscribing, and sharing this video to the people who you think will uh, gain value in this video.